now I want to do the same job three times but I want to make comparisons between doing it manually and doing it with auto automation tools. Let's make a rectangle with some rounded corners. This one I'm going to do manually. This one I'm going to do with the convert element tool. And let's do one with um, by sketching. You could probably use the automatic radius on this one. Okay, manual process. Convert to constructions. Let's give those parallel constraints. Let's add some circles. And make them tangential. We'll do it. We can we can attach graphics now. Let's attach some lines to these constraints. And some arcs. to need a fixed point and some dimensions to make this a, a fully finished solution. I want to make this a symmetrical shape as well with the fixed point in the center. So I'm going to introduce a new idea here of symmetry. If I use an ellipse with a fixed point at the center, I'm going to fix the direction of that ellipse and now add tangents to each one of the lines as I adjust this ellipse you can see a symmetrical solution and add some dimensions and some variables just to finish this off let's say R for radius equals 10 W for width equals 70 and H for height equals 45 we'll add those dimensions and assign it Now I'll add the, mention, the, the width. And the height. Assign those. And we have a well-defined solution. Let's toggle constructions. I, w I don't like those. Um, let's just do this completely and finish because I haven't done enough examples yet of finished solutions. There's something going wrong with my zoom. My zoom is broken. I'm going to change those two constructions. I'm going to leave the variables 
as primary. And then we can test that solution. That's the radius in the corners. That's the width. And that's the height. As you can see, the whole thing is symmetrical. Which is neat. Let's also add some dimensions just for for completeness. Some associated dimensions rather than driving dimensions. I don't want a constraint here, or else it will be over constrained. Let's test it. Notice here that the associated dimensions are moving and are staying neat with the rest of the design as opposed to the driving dimensions. That's that's perfect. Let's do the whole thing now by convert profile to element. Convert element to profile. All of these are on, so let's let's give it a chance and see what it can do. Test it. Yep, that seems fine. So as you can see here, I'm going to um, work at my normal pace, just for a little while, so that uh, just to save you the boredom of having to watch me work. What I'm what I'm doing is I'm I'm setting up the symmetry on both of the other solutions, which it can't be done um, automatically. It has to be done manually. So obviously we need to know how to do ma apply constraints and dimension driven design manually. Um, I'm adding the dimensions and I'm going to use the same variables from the, the first solution on the second solution and on the third. So almost there now. Just adding the tangents again for the symmetric solution. Of course if you want to if you don't want to use an ellipse, um, a circle can be used just be between two lines to get a symmetric sol solution as well, or to make a square of some shape. But um, the most common use for doing symmetry is actually a circle, and that way you'll only need one dimension. Okay, so finishing up now. Okay, I'll slow it down again. Now I've got three profiles, all that behave exactly the same way except that two were created automatically and one was created with manual methods. And they all look and perform in exactly the same way. So let's compare them otherwise. This solution here contains 44 elements. This solution here contains 68 elements, so that's 150%. And this solution here also contains 68 elements. So the for even the simplest of solutions, we're getting 150% increase on whether it be elements or constraints. Sometimes that's just constraints that are doubled. For example, I have a point on location here uh, and a tangent at the same place, and I have a point. So that's three constraints at that point there. Whereas in this solution, there's only one. That one there is a parallel constraint that belongs to something else. So it's a much more efficient method to draw manually. And for general everyday stuff, if you're doing a very simple solution, by all means, go ahead and use the automated tools. But if you're doing a complex solution with a lot of geometry and a lot of interrelated geometry, I would definitely recommend forget the automated tools and go straight for manual every time. For me, I never use the automated tools. I build everything manually first with as few constructions and as few constraints and as few points as possible. And then at the very last step, I'll attach some graphics to it.